First off, um, like to apologize for any regular listeners who may have tuned in expecting to hear uh, smart alecky comments about the film Get Out. We will not be talking about that. No. Secondly, uh, it's important to note the usual format of the show. There's a possibility that there might be a few new listeners to the show. Uh, konnichiwa. Uh, so this is how the show usually works. There are three sections. The first section is kind of like a late night monologue. We get things warmed, get things rolling, tiny little bits, little bits, tiny little things here and there, and uh, maybe a monologue, some jokes, look at the news. Much, uh, much fun. Much fun. The second part of the show, the second s- section is usually home to two segments. Number one is our homework segment, which I love very much. And it's uh, usually uh, something that I have assigned and we discuss, we talk about, and uh, that's a lot of fun. The second section is a section, long-running section of the show, called Notes from the Bookstore. Yes. A fictional look at a fictional bookstore. It's as fictional as Lake Wobegon, and I have always said that. Yes. The third part is the main course. That's when we discuss this week's movie. We look at the stats, the making of the film. We break it down. Sometimes we break down the plot. Um, So I was fired from my job after 17 years. Uh, when I was fired, I was shaking and I was crying as I carried my storytime costumes and my my uh, treasure box to my car. But as I sat in my car, I cried for a long time. And I, I was crying and I was shaking and I was hyperventilating. And I just didn't know what I would do and how I would um, continue on. But one thing, after a few minutes, White Stripes was playing in the car. For those of you keeping score at home, uh, White Stripes was playing in the car. One thing comforted me while I was in that that car. First thing, I called my wife and through tears, I said, honey, I'm coming home. And she knew. My wife has been amazing. We're going to get through this together. One thing I used to say in California back when the job was very difficult and I just wanted to leave is that she always said, no matter what happens, it's you and me against the world. Yeah. And so my wife has been amazing. And no, I know. So, so that made me feel better, but I, she said, don't come home if you, if you can't do it and I didn't know if I could drive so I just stayed there and kind of cried it out I moved my car so technically I was crying in front of the skeleton of the Michael's craft store ah okay made me I didn't want to be crying in front of the bookstore Uh, the store that shall not be named yes if in this segment you hear me talking about a bookstore. It's obviously the fictional bookstore from our long-running fictional segment, Notes yeah. from the Bookstore. Or, it's as fictional as like Wobegon, and I have always said that. Or Voldestore. store. I like that. Um, one thing comforted me. It, besides my wife, something came into my head because I'm that type of guy who is uh, shaking and having a panic attack and hyperventilating and crying. And then something weird pops into my head and I'm laughing. Yeah. And that one thing that cheered me up is this. Next week on the Pope on film, (laughs) it's the shocking series finale of notes from the bookstore. Yes. Who lives, who dies, who will be left standing. 
This long-running segment comes to a close next week. It's the series finale of Notes from the Bookstore. <laughs> so tune into that next week. That's going to be exciting. You know? Yeah. So many loose ends. How is that going to finish? Mm-hmm. Very excited about that. Um, so, um, let's talk about Twitter. Okay. I, in, in the Monday morning, I had roughly 500 Twitter followers. Yeah. The, uh, I was going to say the majority, but that's not true. A large portion of them are dating website bots. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't know why I'm, I was popular with dating website bots, but there was a period in time about a year or two ago where I would like four or five times a week, I would just be getting Svetlana follows you. <laughs> And I go, okay, I, I will follow Svetlana back. And then Svetlana will post like five times a day and it'll be funny homespun statement. And then it'll be a uh, inspirational quote, funny homespun statement, quote from a movie. Dating sites are very popular and a good way to meet singles. You can meet singles here. That, that was just a huge part of my feed and and um the, the I don't want to go into specifics because of a massive lengthy um packet of paper okay that I have uh in my in my living room my kitchen table but let's just say that it's important to note that I was fired. Yeah. I was given no paperwork. I was given no warning. I was given no, uh, nothing to sign. Really? I was not told how to act. I was not told how to respond. I was read a small prepared statement of about two or three sentences. And then, um, I was escorted out of the store after I cleaned, after I got my, my stuff together. Yeah. So I am 100% clear since I was absolutely positively 100% fired to have gone on Twitter uh, and aired out my sadness. I'm not angry. I'm not upset. I'm not bitter. I'm sad. Yeah. To me, it's not about the loss of a job. It's just about Mr. Steve. He, kids gave me that name. Yeah. Kids gave me that name. The way that it worked was I would just be doing story time. And my name was Steve. My name is Steve. I'm, I'm going to be doing story time today. And one kid came up to me and said, what can I call you? It, well, okay, you can call me Steve. No, he, the kid was, uh, he, he was super polite and he would drive all the way from Davis, California every week to come to story time. It's like an hour drive. Yeah. And he'd come to, to watch story time. And, and yeah, he would drive. He, he would drive himself. Super talented. Super talented kid. He was a That's cool. Yeah. So, he said, no, I need your last name because you're an adult. I can't just call you Steve. What's your name? I need to call you Mr. Something. And I said, well, okay, well, my last name is Galindo. And he said, so your name is Mr. Gallin. Ga <laughs> so you're Mr. Steve. And I said, yeah. yes, you can just call me Mr. Steve. So the kids gave me that name and that's very important to me. Yeah. So I mean it's about the kids. They would come from Norman and Moore and Chickasha and Oklahoma City and Shawnee and Seminole and Midwest City. They would come from far distances. 
once a week to come and see me. Some kids would even come as far as Blanchard. Do you Blanchard, Bunny? Do you know how far Blanchard is? No, I don't. Neither do neither do I. But it sounds Cause far. Because there's a bajillion cities in this crazy small state. <laughs> I don't know how. It's amazing. And, and I always, I, when I was at work helping customers, uh, you know, some customer would be talking to me about some place they visited. And I would always make the mistake of saying, oh, where's that? Yeah. Like I know the one bajillion cities in this state. So they'd say, oh, it's over by uh, uh, Taconda Shawanga. You know, <laughs> over by uh, Shingle Ridge. Mm -hmm. Over there in the Rush Hills. Over in uh, Tikanarongo County. Yeah. And I go, oh, yeah, totally. I know exactly where that is. Yes. Okay. Sure. But apparently Blanchard is far. Uh -huh. Um. I, I I started reading at my store in Phoenix. Shout out to Metro Center. I would occasionally read there. We we had someone in charge of the children's area, but sometimes she just wouldn't be there and the manager needed someone to read. So I, I was the only person in the store, apparently, with acting experience. And I moved to Sacramento. And I made a big name for myself and I would travel to schools and I would travel to churches. I started doing birthday parties. Yeah. I, 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 I did story time there for nine years. I did story time at a birthday party at a pizza place for a two year old child. <laughs> and I also was hired to do a story time for a 70 year old woman whose dog wanted to kill me oh, great! because I was probably the first Latino person who had ever gone into that expensive three-story house. Uh -huh. I thought for sure that dog was going to bite my limbs off. So I had been doing story time in, in Oklahoma for about five years or six years, and I had there were other parts of the job. You know, I lifted heavy boxes. I uh, set up displays. I shelved. I was the person you talked to when you couldn't find something. I was the person you went to. Mm -hmm. So now everything's just going to be gone, I guess. Because I'm not there. But well, I they're just going to have to find it for their own fucking selves. Yeah. So I had been with uh, a certain company for about 17 and a half years. And I was in mourning when I went on Twitter and I started. At first, I just wanted to talk about my career. Yeah, I had a very long-running, successful career. And it's a bit ridiculous that someone who got a full-page article in a corporate newspaper might be let go for no reason. Yeah, But I just wanted to get on Twitter and... I was basically going through the seven stages of grief and I just wanted to talk about there's seven, right? Five. I don't know. Denial, anger, Ross. Denial, anger, sadness. Joy is a horrible person, but she's the voice of Leslie. You know? <laughs> oh, now I'm just talking about inside out. Okay. never mind. Seven or five. The stages of grief. Yes. Three. Ike. 42. It's probably 42. We go, we go back to 42. Fresh yeah. Yeah. So. You add a couple in there. Like, yeah. So I, I posted a thread about my career, about this and that. Um, and next thing I knew, I went from having 500 Twitter followers to having 1,000 almost 1200 twitter followers wow within the space of a day and a half yeah and the thing that i that i that i'm comfortable talking about is the reaction of people to my story it's amazing see uh, so many people are now just just 
supporting me and want me to succeed and that makes me feel better but then there are some people a, a large amount of people blame trump i wouldn't congratulate trump but a lot of I people blame, a lot of people blame trump for me losing my 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 job for me getting fired no, no he he doesn't he doesn't own the store that must not be named but it's just but it's just oh so the tax cuts were supposed <laughs> to be so successful and yet people like the reverend steve are losing their jobs hard working people it's like okay trump didn't fire me yeah a really nice manager who didn't want to and was crying the entire time fired me yeah and who uh, repeatedly apologized to me because she didn't want to she she fired me at the behest of other people. I Trump had nothing to do with this, and you don't have to blame him. You can, though, because it's great oh, to good. blame Trump. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying you don't have to. If, you, if everybody, when there's an increase in the job market, and there's an increase in this, and there's an increase in that, and everybody's like, oh, Trump is doing so amazing. Look at all these, these things that are improving. You know what? We can go ahead and blame him for the things that are going to shit too. He's got to take credit where credit is due. That's oh, no, that is a good him. point. Everybody only takes... blame Obama during shit like this, so why not yeah. Trump? Everybody, nobody wanted to credit Obama with the good shit, but yeah. they want to. You know, Republicans are like crediting. They like credit when good shit happens, and they want to deny and blame other people when the bad shit happens. But when bad shit happens, it's not even in the control of the president. Look at the gas prices. Remember that? Oh, oh thanks, God, Obama. they hated thanks, Obama. Obama. That's Obama's fault. What did yeah. Obama have to do with the price of fucking oil in Iraq? They or hated the Obama. Fucking wherever the hell it came from. They hated Obama when the gas prices were high, but when the gas prices oh, were low, well, Obama didn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. So you can blame Trump if you want to. You don't have to. Some okay. people... Um, Did it happen? It, I became so big on Twitter that for what might be one of the first times ever, I, I started getting attacked by like trolls. Yeah. By, by Twitter people. Yeah. Apparently I'm a crybaby. Apparently I'm acting like a hero and maybe that's why I was fired. Okay. Uh, apparently, apparently. If I ever get fired, remind me not to act like this guy. Okay. Apparently, uh, I'm a lib turd. Right. And apparently people get fired all the time and I just need to nut up. Okay. And also one guy said that I should I should not worry about a job and maybe worry on worry more about becoming a a, a legal citizen. Oh, all right, that guy. That guy was blocked pretty quickly. But the, the majority of people were just apparently I struck a nerve, and yeah. you, you know, stories like this are happening all over the place. And I was also surprised by how many other people who had the same thing happen to them quickly just appeared, and it was like, oh yeah, yeah, me too. I, I was fired like this. I was fired at this time. I was there for this many years. Say, so, and as is now the case of public record from people other than me. As you can see all over social media, some people were fired on the phone. Yeah. Legal. Some people were fired over Facebook Messenger. Oh. Some people were told on social media that they that they that were not supposed to come in anymore. Oh Lord. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. No. Yeah. Are, the are these can... are these all Volder Volderstor employees? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And here's another vague uh, uh, generality that I just want to say that is in no way related to any specific store. Um, it's messed up for a corporation, any corporation, to fire a large swatch of people solely because, hey, you are a great employee and you've had a number of successes. However... You have this position, and we're firing all people with this position. Goodbye. Yeah, you just have to be fortunate enough to hold this position in yeah. the store. Yeah, yeah. 
The thing is, though, that really pisses me off. And and again, we're talking vague generalities vague about generalities about, about a corporations store. about corporations. Yes. But um, the bulb store, <laughs> they know you don't make it to this specific position without spending a significant amount of time there or coming in from an outside source with that experience. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, as often as we did see that happen, I, I feel that this Boulder store didn't do that as often as I'd like to think they did. So they usually try to retire from within for those people who've been there for a while. Mm -hmm. So every single person who hypothetically got laid off, they've been there for a minimum of five years, I want to say. And yeah. that's a lot. And that's, that's a hard pill to swallow. But you can move on easier from that than, say, 10 years, 15, 20. Mm -hmm. It's just that's, that's your lifeblood, and it's being torn away. Yeah. You don't know what the fuck you're supposed to do from then on out. Yeah. You've spent the last two decades, or almost two decades. You know, I mean, shit, Steve's had this job longer than I've known him. Yeah, at a job, at a job, at at, at Boulder Store longer at, than I've known him. It's been a constant in his life longer than I have, and I'm his fucking wife. Yeah, yeah, it's it's difficult. I imagine it's difficult for everybody who was possibly. It's like losing off. a limb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know I can. Bounce back. I know I can bounce back. And it's just now I understand. A I understand, though, that you would hear story. I don't know if you guys do, but I'd hear stories about people who'd go <clears> into <throat> retirement or be forced into retirement, yeah. and they don't know what the fuck they're supposed to do with the rest of their lives because they spent however many years of their life getting up at a certain time, getting dressed, putting on a tie, going into the office, doing this, doing that. Remember that Gilmore Girls episode? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness, Bunny. My body is waking me up at 5.30 every morning. Oh. Which is weird, because I didn't even wake up then. Wait, I would wait, wake up at like 6. Wait till the dreams come. Oh. But my body is just, every morning, I'm waking up at 5.30. And I'm like, no. No, body. We're going back to bed. And my mind's like, let's remember all the lyrics to Hamilton. <laughs> no, wait, wait for the dreams where you where you start. You'll be back and receiving. You'll have to. You'll be in a a real big rush to do something because if you don't get that something done, you'll get fired. Yeah, that'll trying... that'll be a the, the rough narrative of the dream. Yeah, I'm trying to think of positives. Here's a positive. My wrists are going to feel a lot better. It, it it has been difficult to lift 40 pound boxes for 8 hours a day, 5 days a week for two and a half years. I've seen other receiving managers end up like like a like a horses being led out to pasture because receiving was too hard for them. Yeah. So many receivers who even, even are receivers, just in pain. They they went and got surgery. Yeah, yeah. On their wrist, come back, and only eventually to have to give it up because they they just couldn't do it because it was just it's hard. It's I, a hard job. It's hard on your body. I remember and Q, and she would uh, during her about. breaks have to like put her arms in this like UV machine. Uh, yeah, after her surgery. Yeah. Yeah, and and then after the, that, there was what there was Marissa and Jesse, Kyle, who wasn't even a fucking receiving manager, but yeah. they put him in there and made him act like one and didn't want to give him the fucking pay for it. Yeah, I, it's just uh, so many. We've seen so many. Oh. We've seen so many. Are we talking <laughs> about Kyle, the bookseller? No, no, that's Kai. Oh, okay, Kai. He they is a rap superstar. They knew each other. Though. They did know each other, though. Yeah, there were a lot of alpha males in that store. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, 
what I'm trying what I'm trying to realize is is that I'm I'm just every morning I wake up and I don't want to get out of bed. Yeah. And and I don't want to do anything. I do because I have kids. Mm-hmm. And that's one good thing is that my children make sure if it wasn't for the children, I would never leave this room. I would just want to stay in this house and never leave and just peek out of the windows afraid. Yeah. But I have kids. I have people who depend on me and I'm up every morning and I'm getting these kids ready for bed and I'm wrestling with Bella to get out of her bed and I'm making sure uh, Maxwell get dressed five minutes later. All I hear are Legos Maxwell stop playing with the Legos and get dressed. And that's why I have to wake up earlier than usual than I imagine normal American parents do because these two kids specifically, it's a freaking wrestling match to get them out of the door. <laughs> and, and, and then Emerald and Amber, and I've got to drop them off here and pick them up. And it's just, thank God I have a family right now. Yeah. You know, cause they are just making sure like, you got this. Eleanor somehow knows that something is wrong. Yeah. She can barely, she can barely talk, but she knows that something's wrong. Cause every once in a while, she'll just hug me and start patting me on the shoulder. Oh, somehow she just knows. The weird thing is, is that it, apparently I was feeling kind of, I was at least looking a bit down and depressed, uh, yesterday while I was giving her a bath. Okay. So she's in the water and she immediately stands up and dripping wet. Dada hug. And Aww. I'm like, no, I can't. I can't. Okay. I'll go with this. And she just drenches me in water, giving me a big fat hug. <laughs> and I'm just dripping wet, but she's just, no, daddy, come here, come here, bring it in, bring it in. <laughs> yeah, no, we're doing this. Yes, yes, springs. honey. Superstition Springs, that's in Arizona? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, What? what are you reading? That's a map of Arizona. Those are five. Outback Steakhouses. Oh my goodness! You know, I showed that to you like a long time no, ago. Yeah, Outback Steakhouses are all laid out in pentagrams. It's a massive conspiracy. It might oh. be the deep state. The majority of I have seen a number of maps like that, not just Superstition Springs, but a number of but, maps of other also, cities. Also, the Superstition Freeway runs through it. Walmart's in the center, so it could be a gate to hell. Yeah. Well, that's where the FEMA camps are. And yeah, there's Crossroads Town Center, and the Demon, Crossroads, the Crossroads, yeah. where demon demon deals are made. Yeah, mm-hmm. and where um uh uh Lou Diamond Phillips movies are made, and nice. Ralph Macchio learned how to play the blues. Yeah, that's who I was thinking of. Was Diamond Phillips in that? I don't know if he was in that. I was thinking Ralph Macchio. Yeah. So uh, the positive side. There's a number of positives. For example, tonight's inventory. Good. Yes. I didn't want to do that. Especially because apparently a small select amount of um, stores are chosen to have this these uh, expensive auditors look over everything. So basically, it's like a regular inventory with all these people. But also, there's a team of men in black looking over your every move. Okay. So it's like there's two teams. There's three teams. So there's you, the employees, and then there's the people who are counting the books because we hire a group to do the inventory. Uh, In The people in Oklahoma who do it are nice, but uh, sometimes they're not the, the quickest people in the bunch yeah not not the greenest bananas in in the bunch in california though oh my goodness oh hey a person who's coming in to do receiving interesting teardrop tattoo (laughs) for the people who would do the inventory in california i've seen a fight break out in an inventory yeah between two inventory people 
So it's just it's just nasty. And, and, and so not only is it you, the employees, and then the people who are doing inventory, but now there's like men in black who have been hired from an accounting firm that are going to also be going over your books and making you look stuff up while you're trying to also keep your eye on the people who are doing the actual inventory. It, ridiculous. I didn't know what I was going to do. Now I don't have to. Good. And that is definitely a positive. Yeah. Yeah. Positive side. My health is going to be better. I don't have to be in inventory. Uh, One thing I'm going to be sad about is that I was going to wear a taco outfit all day during uh, Macho Nacho Day. Yes. So that's gone. Um, I will say uh, uh, that, uh, again, public record the store that I was fired from less than 24 hours afterwards, the store posted on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, a lengthy, uh, uh, picture and article about how I was unfortunately let go. And it is beyond the store's control and that they are sad to see me go and they will miss me and they wish me well in any future endeavors. And it stayed up for about 24 hours until I'm assuming corporate made them take it down. Uh. So, and and here's another thing that I will say, once again, not talking about any corporation at all. Yeah. I'm just talking in general. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have an employee who has a, a diagnosed bipolar disorder, yeah, and also that employee has a severe case of post-traumatic stress disorder from a incident with a robber and a gun that happened in the store, mm-hmm. then many people could see. Uh, severe emotional distress happening from hiring this man and keeping him in a position for almost two decades and then with no warning, no two week notice just extreme paranoia. yeah, a man who gets extreme paranoia suddenly pulling the rug from under that man Yeah, many people could see that as severe emotional distress from a person who has uh, uh, health issues. I would agree. Yes, I would agree a lot. Yeah. And, and really, and really, corporate taking down that, that, that message, that's a real fucking dick move. That's a yeah. dick move on a lot of levels. Not only is it a dick move against you, it's a dick move against everybody who's going to fucking show up this Saturday. Yep. You mean who's not gonna show up? Yeah. You know? Well, that's why this Well, Saturday, they, they won't show up once they find out Steve's gone. That's yeah. why this this Saturday I will be streaming a live short story time from I'm not sure where. I think the kitchen table. Okay. Why wake me up for that? You're not going to be up at 11 in the afternoon. Well, never mind. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Bella. Um, it's just, I don't want to not do it. Yeah. And also, I post. I eventually posted a, 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 a note on my story time with Mr. Steve Facebook group yeah. saying that I was uh, fired. I was let go. It was a cost-cutting measure. Cost cutting measure again is a statement that was also used on the store's page. Huh. Uh, on their nice note, it was a cost cutting measure. It was unfortunate, but I'm trying to let people know that I am still, I still want to entertain kids. I still want to do story time. So this Saturday, I will be streaming story time live on my Facebook page. After that, hopefully, I will be able to transition maybe to a YouTube page, maybe to Twitch. I'm not even sure what it is, but apparently people can send me money in it. So it's like yeah. YouTube, but I don't have to bow down to sponsors. And it's it's rip- like YouTube, 
Um, it it's it seems populated mostly by people who um, play video games for a living. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, although I've heard of other people uh, doing like online classes and tutorials and things like that. So yeah, that's about all I really know about Twitch. Yeah, I don't know anything about it either. I know, I know about Twitch in the same way that I know about uh, Stitcher. Yeah. So, um, I'm 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 trying to get some things together. A lot of people on my Twitter page want me to get a YouTube page. A, a ton of people want me to get a YouTube page. Yeah. And we're going to make one. And we're going to do it. And uh, uh, Emerald's a 16-year-old girl. And I, she's a bit of a mystery to me. I'm her 40-year-old father. Yeah. But I wasn't 100% aware oh. what she was going to – what she was taking classes for. Yeah. At a at a uh, technology school, what is she taking classes for? I want the official Digital term: media digital media production. Uh huh. Anyway, she's getting pretty good at graphics and editing. Cool. That's what she's taking classes for, and she's basically like come up to the plate and said, "Yeah, if because because I always thought that I could have like a successful YouTube page for my story time. So I've been doing story time for over 14 years. But the thing that always got me was I would need to edit this. Yeah. And I cannot. But then Emerald just came up to the plate and said, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can. No, she didn't I can't. That. I cool. said, hey, edit. And she said, yeah. Oh, see, so yeah. So Natasha said, would you edit? And Emerald said, yeah. Cool. So. We're gonna do this. The only thing, basically, the only thing that's stopping me from being a success is my own crippling doubt. I am sure that's true. It's just weird because I've, I've for a long time talked about my religion in the Church of Ed Wood, and Ed Wood wanted to be a filmmaker, and so he became a filmmaker. He didn't have the money. He didn't have the cast. He didn't have the set. He didn't have the script. He didn't. He 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 had all of these obstacles in front of him, but he didn't let the reality of his own situation get in the way of stopping my dreams. Yeah. Now I've found myself in a position where I've given almost two decades of my life to a company who has decided blindly and for no real reason other than the title I had to try and destroy my life. Yeah. So now suddenly it's weird because it's like, uh, it's like I imagine if a Christian who reads the Bible constantly suddenly is at the zoo and literally tumbles into a lion's den. <laughs> okay. And it's like, oh man, I've been talking about this so much. <laughs> now I'm living it. Basically, that's me. Suddenly, I have to not just preach the word of Ed Wood. I've got to live this. Yes. I have always had a dream of what I could be as a storyteller and as a kid's entertainer and as someone online and as a book writer. Natasha and I, the other day, we were waiting for Maxwell and we were in the car for like 10 or 15 minutes and we were shooting ideas and they were all so freaking good. And we, there's ideas and there's stuff and we need to. We had a little bit. Uh, and, and we have ideas and we have things. It's just. I need to do it. The only thing that's stopping me is me. Yeah. Right. Now. But I think. I understand. I, yeah. But I think I can do this. I think you could do this. I know you can do it. Because a a corporation that I still love, is some people call me stupid for that. Maybe but a little stupid. A, a massive amount of people got my story and said, oh, I will never shop here again. Boycott. Uh, boycott this and that. And it's like, no. I'm not saying that. Yeah. You know, so I, I posted a, a statement. I posted another statement on my Twitter and I said, 
please don't take this out on your local store. Yeah. Your local store didn't do this to me. Some people in suits in New York and New Jersey did this to me. Yeah. Not the people in your store. That will just hurt local stores that will hasten the demise of bookstores <laughs> that will hasten the demise of books. Hate the corporation. Don't hate really nice people at your local bookstore. Yes. Who are just trying to make ends meet. And now they have less experienced people and they're going to need all the help they can get. Yes. That is not a popular, that is not a popular statement for people who went on Twitter and read my story and said, ah, oh! pitchforks at the ready <laughs> you know because this because i never went on twitter in anger i had a dream job and i freaking loved it yeah and i'm sad to see this major part of my life gone but i think i can do this i think i can do this I know you can. natasha you knows can do this. i can i just i just also need to know i can and i'm working on it and obviously, I mean, it should go without saying, if you need anything from me, you know, just let me know. Okay, I might hit with you it, up. On that. With it being live, it makes it kind of difficult, you know. Well, so. I'm, well, well, this week it's going to be live. After that, I'm going to see what I can do. Yeah. I'll definitely need more books. Yeah. Um, But... That's basically all I have to say, except for the fact that I'm obviously psychic. Yes. On this podcast, I yes, have talked know. at length about my incredible psychic mind powers mm -hmm. that I'm only partially serious about. But there was something in the air. There was it, my psychic mind power told me. Weapons at the ready. Yes. You know, there was something in there was in my psychic my my spidey sense was tingling. And I remember like three weeks ago throwing out the trash and said, OK. So I'm throwing out the trash and for no real reason whatsoever. Hey, Steve, maybe now's the time to consider the intricate details of my company's severance package. OK. OK, so this is how it works. And I'm there throwing out the trash while also trying to figure out exactly how much I would get in the event that this would happen. Not like it would. Yeah. yeah. But that was my psychic power saying, Steve, be prepared. Be be prepared. Thank you, honey, because I was going to make like a Lion King reference, but I wasn't sure what reference and you just went for it. Thank you, honey. <laughs> We're a good team. We're a good team. We're Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. You're flipping a coin. Heads. And it's always coming up heads. Heads. Yeah. Heads. Heads. <laughs> um, and then um, I went on there's a number of Facebook groups for employees of companies. And a lot of companies secretly not controlled by corporate have closed groups of oh Walmart employees. Yeah. And this is a closed group on Facebook and the only way you can join this group is if you are a, an employee of Walmart. And then that is a group where employees can come in and kind of talk shop and kind of talk smack about the company and then there are subcategories where oh we are Walmart receivers only. And you can talk about problems you're having. You can talk about, oh, did you also get this weird delivery in? Yeah. Of 300 copies of Settlers of Catan. So, so, so that, so, um, I was in a group of employees of a store. Yeah. And there was something like two weeks ago that just said, you know what? Maybe I should get on this group of like thousands of of employees of this company and just remind them how long I've been working with them. Mm -hmm. So I posted a post of my first customer and I'm at the register and I'm having a hard time. And I and the guy says, what's the problem? And I said, I'm sorry, sir. This is just my my first day. And you're my first customer. And, and I apologize. And the guy just laughed in my face. Yeah. And said. Wait, you chose to work here? 
these stores are closing down. You'll be out of a job in a month. And he laughed in my face. And now look at me. I have been gainfully employed with this corporation for 17 and a half years. I like to find that man and tell him stories of my lengthy career. Yeah. There was there was something in me, Spidey sense, that said I should remind everyone of how long I have been here and how mm-hmm. difficult this has been. So once uh, the news happened, it's funny because like I'm depressed, but my phone is still beeping with messages of him of people in this group liking my post. Really nice. Yeah. So what I did was I went to the original post and I wanted to post something and I wasn't sure what I wanted it to, to really showcase what had happened, but I also didn't want it to be negative. So I just posted a gif and it's a gif of back to the future two and Uh old Marty McFly is getting a million facts that say you're fired. Yeah. And so now it's really hitting on people that it's like, Oh man, I love this post. Let me read the comments. Oh, and why did I post that psychic mind powers? I specifically messaged genie on Friday Yes. Just to be safe, I am doing this story time tomorrow like it's the last one ever. Yes. I, I, I'm pretty sure I saw that one. I think he messaged me, too, on that one. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And I went, I, went, I went full throttle with this story time. And I was loud, and I was, I was crazy, and I was, I was screaming. And it was just, I was amped up. I was pumped. I was jazzed. Like Robin in the Lego Batman movie, I was jazzed. <laughs> and I just went all out as if it was my last story time. I, and when I first started, there were like eight kids at story time. But there were but as I went on with story time, apparently the weather was apparently the weather was so cold that that all of the people who were coming to story time were just late. So by the yeah. end of story time, I had like 40 kids. Nice. And it just felt right. At one point in time, I was I sometimes when I finish a book, I'll like flip it in the air and catch it. And one kid said, why do you do that, Mr. Steve? And I said, because I've been here for 17 and a half years and I had to get good at something. (laughs) And the kids laughed and I'm like, yeah, no, this this might be it. Yeah. Of course, there's no way for me to know that. The only way that I would know that is if I had massive psychic mind powers, which I do. Yes, you do. Now it's 100% official. I'm going to become like the New Jersey medium, the Long Island medium. That's going to be my thing now. All right. I'm going cool. to get a reality show and I'm going to get a TV show on NBC where uh, some actor is going to play me. I'm not sure who. Ryan Maybe. Reynolds. No, I'm thinking of someone who really looks like me. I'm thinking Louis Gossett Jr. Is he even still alive? We have no idea. Uh, I want to end on a positive note. I this morning I was on Twitter. I, I no, I was on YouTube, and uh, I'm really upset because I'm like, oh hey, uh, uh, I am off of work now. I can watch more YouTube because there's always YouTube videos I have to watch. I I collect them in a watch later playlist. And last week, I swear I had like 120 something videos that I had to watch. Bella and I just went through them. We got them down to like 90. Nice. So I wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. Got my glasses. I'm out the door. I'm going to hit this city. Brush my teeth with a bottle of Jack. Yeah, I brush my teeth with a bottle of Jack Daniels barbecue sauce. It's really weird. Yeah. That's good and stuff. So, yeah, so I look and see all, you know, I look and see the videos that were posted during the evening and early morning, and I put them on my Watch Later playlist. So my Watch Later playlist is, here's a monologue from James Corden. Here's a, a funny bit from uh, uh, Stephen Colbert. Here's uh, uh, Samantha B. Yeah. Here's... Uh, you know, I, I've got all of these things on there. None of them are on now because of the freaking Olympics. Oh. No TV show is basically doing new shows except for Jimmy Kimmel. 
Jimmy Kimmel. Because Jimmy Kimmel's Jimmy Kimmel. He he knows he's not like in the top two, so he's doing whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. Basically. If he's not in the top two, then it's not much of a race, so he's just doing whatever he wants. But there's no new Stephen Colbert. There's no new Jimmy Fallon. There's no new anything. And it's really frustrating because I thought I had time now to watch it, but yeah. I don't. But I saw a commercial yes. this morning, and it's an NBC commercial, and it, and it goes like this. NBC is now the most watched network on television. Okay. Now, let me break that stuff down for yeah. you, okay? They didn't say... Uh, NBC is now number one in the ratings. Mm -hmm. They said we're the most watched network on television. And let me tell you why. Three reasons. Number one, the freaking Super Bowl. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Number two, the freaking Olympics. And number three, This Is Us, which is just makes people cry and everybody loves that show. But it's they're not number one in the ratings. (laughs) <laughs> They're number one in the amount of people who have watched NBC shows. And, but that's basically the Super Bowl. Any station that has the Super Bowl can say that. Yeah. It's a it's a cheat and it's ridiculous. It's a cheat and it's a fucking lie. Yeah. It's ridiculous. God damn bastages. Yeah. So anyway, that's my story. That's my podcast. That's the podcast this week. I don't want to do Get Out. I was going to watch it on Monday after I got home from work, and then I got home and I go, I'm sorry, I'm not watching Get Out. Okay. I'm sure it's going to be a good movie. I just never watched it. I'm having a horrible week, and I don't want to watch something that's going to be a good psychological, racially tinted thriller. I just want something dumb and stupid that I can make fun of. Yes. So I I understand that feeling a lot. So Bunny, yes, I'm, uh, I have a question. This is a difficult question. As Eleanor screams in the background, I have a question. It's a difficult question. Okay. I am asking a lot of you. Okay. Bella, don't say a thing. Okay. I am asking a lot of you, but we've been doing this podcast since like October of 2014 and now it's 2018 and we've grown close and I love you very much. When I, when my psychic powers told me something was happening and that it was going to affect me and my job performance, the first thing I said was I need to tell Natasha and Natasha said, being a very positive person, she said, relax, it could be nothing. And then I said, okay, I need to talk to someone who might believe me. I'm telling bunny and Jeannie. Yeah. Because the way you were one of the first people I, you two were were the first people I needed to tell because you mean a lot Aww. to me. Thank you, you guys mean a lot to me. Basically, you guys are family, yes. and it was, you mean a lot to me. This podcast means a lot to me. It's a really, it's such an important outlet for me, and I'm asking a lot of you. Okay, what's up? Next week. Okay. We can have the same homework. Uh, jackass. Right. Um, what has happened to them now? That article, that's interesting shit. These people who did the show Jackass and beat themselves up are now in their 40s and 50s. How is this affecting them? I'm interested in knowing uh, that. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's the series finale of Notes from the Bookstore. The last <laughs> Notes from the Bookstore ever. Who lives, who dies, who will live. <laughs> Yeah, who lives, who dies, who tells your story. Oh, this is a great title. Next week, can we please do the Emoji Movie? Okay. Is that a yes? Because this movie is... Is it on? Is it on? It's a yes. It's on Netflix. It's on freaking Netflix. It's on Netflix. Max always sees it and he goes, oh! And I'm like, no, we can't watch this. This is the worst of the worst. This is like Manos, the Hands of Fate, sponsored by McDonald's. Yeah. And, and if you let Maxwell watch it, that could qualify as child abuse. Yes, basically. So there could basically. be legal ramifications. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I can handle this because it's a stupid movie. 
and it's horrible. This is my wheelhouse. Okay. I don't think I don't think I can do Get Out right now. I don't think I can do uh, a serious movie. I can't do Schindler's List. Yeah. But I can do the but, emoji. But how movie. about Schindler's Fist? Oh well, that I watch all the time anyway. Okay. Oh, uh, another thing I wanted to mention: a uh, shout out to black people, gay people, and trans people, because out of the massive amount of followers that I've gotten over the last couple of days on Twitter, yeah. they're mostly African American, gay, bi, or trans people. And I love that. Cool. It's just it, these these people who are kind of uh, a minority voice in society heard me talking about my problems with capitalism, yeah. and really it, it touched them in some way. And that's the majority of people right now who are sharing my story. Very cool. Yeah. So you are I'm, all I'm, welcome here. Yes, all welcome here on the Pope on Film podcast. What I want to do is then is now go on Twitter and say that I have officially done my first public interview. Yes, about this issue. It is uh, with the Pope on Film podcast. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to hear more about my problems. Be sure and check out SoundCloud. Cool. Technically, that's the truth, and is and it's not necessarily cheap. No. Yeah. So, oh, and and let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Um, I told Bella that tonight, because none of the kids have school tomorrow, that I was going to drink. Okay. That I was, that I was going to drink tonight. And then I needed some alcohol. And Bella said, that's bad. And I said, hold on, muchacho. Because I am in a group of receivers. You have no idea how many receivers were drunk before 11 a.m. <laughs> so many people had a bottle of Patron at 9.45 in the morning. Really? A lot. I was hearing from people in the Tulsa store that was like, oh, Steve, hey, I know we don't talk, but uh, I just wanted to let you know that I was fired, too. And I'm at a bar and it's 1030. <laughs> and I'm like, good for you. I would be there, too. But I have kids and responsibilities. Yeah. Then later that day, I'm like, OK, Amber, let's go home. I'm picking you up from walls. Let's go home because I need alcohol in me. <laughs> and she's like oh are you gonna drink oh you know what you earned it yeah and i'm like thank you i did mm -hmm. I, I i drank a little bit monday and now i'm drink i'm drinking today so i think i've I, i've barely drank I've all, all things considered no you haven't so uh bunny uh, from the bottom of my heart from the cockles of my heart Maybe below the cockles. Maybe below in the, the subcockle cockle area. Yeah. Maybe in the liver, maybe in the kidney, maybe even in the colon. We don't know. <laughs> but from the bottom of my something, thank you for this. Oh, no problem. This has been nice. I, I, this makes I, me feel I live for this. You know that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. But but I've been worried because it's like uh, this has been such a difficult time, and now I'm going to do the podcast. There's, I've been worried, but uh, but like yesterday, it just hit me like, oh no, this is just the podcast. This is Bonnie and Jeannie and Maxwell. This is always good, and 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 I'm just going to do the podcast and record it and be honest and be truthful and relay the facts, and this will be good. And I feel so much better already. Yeah. So thank you for that. No, no problem. But I think it's important not to release this episode as a special episode. Uh-huh. No. Episode 151, instead of covering Get Out, which eventually we will get to, because I hear it's a wonderful film. We will we are covering firings. Firings, yes. Termination. 
Uh, I, I wanted to do a special episode mostly because you were drinking. Yeah. It was like, oh, it was like, oh, yeah, let's get this story out of him while he's drinking. This would, this, this will be some action. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, well, I've had two Tecate not horribles. <laughs> Seriously, Tecate is just battery acid. It's, it's, it's horrible. Yeah. So I'm really excited for Tecate Light because it's, it's now the official beer of the Popon Film Podcast. Did you know that, honey? Uh, I didn't. Do you think that Tecate Light will send you some beer now? Maybe. Tecate Light, it doesn't taste like crap. <laughs> so between Tecate Light and the Black Dress Warehouse, we've we've got a and a Chia Souls. Chia Souls. We've we've got a pretty good list of uh sponsors. Well there's also the, the henchman warehouse. Oh yes, a nameless henchman oh, warehouse. Yeah. Yes. If you're if you're gonna be a supervillain, you need to stock up on nameless henchmen. <laughs> nameless also, henchmen warehouse. We have such also a ridiculous pain. history. We do. I'm just worried that 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 people will listen to this and and this will be it. No, church organists. Church organists. Yeah. No, get out. Well, so, people people won't get it at first, and and other people. Uh, if we get a lot of listeners off of this, then we're going to get a lot of bitching too, you know. Yes. And it's yes. like, oh, the kids crying in the background. Oh, what's that ding sound that keeps happening, uh, or whatever else, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I just cannot wrap my head around anymore how anybody. It's okay, baby. Anybody can get upset enough over something as stupid as like our podcast or something like that that they need to make a comment about it. They need to let you know. Like, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. Like, like it doesn't seem important enough to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I have, I have kids. I have a wife. I have a life. I have a family. They are here and. I'm not going to force them to shut up so I can record my podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now that we're at the end, honey, next week we're doing the emoji movie. I apologize. Now that we are at the end. Did you need my uh, random facts? Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, Before we end, um, I was worried that this podcast would be way too down. So Natasha has offered up a one or two interesting facts. Okay. What are those? Say say the one that, that, that you were talking about. In the car? Yeah, in the car. Okay. Uh, which one? Both of them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, both of them. Okay. Sure. So, um, it's, a, it's, it's our podcast. Women are liberated, right? We take birth control so that we don't get all mopped up and have to have a, an abortion. Right. Uh, well, in some areas, the, the, there's so many women that take birth control, and a body does not function so effectively that it'll use all the hormones in a birth control. And right. so where do the hormones go? When you use the bathroom, they go down the toilet. Where does that water go? Well, long story short, all of the um, estrogen. Yeah is making a oh, higher please, please tell me fish have tits no oh. but there's a higher percentage of female fish being born or hatched i guess yeah. instead of males and that brings me to my next random fact because of global warming the oceans are getting warmer because the oceans are getting warmer it has created the perfect climate for all turtles to be born female 99% of females are um, turtles are being hatched female Wow. Thank you, global warming. Yeah. <laughs> so there's my random useless well, not so useless facts. What what happens in the next generation? I that's an excellent question. A lot of sea turtles die. That's exactly it. I mean, unless, you know, we stop polluting the earth and the male ah. turtles live long enough to No. Um, excuse you know, me. Try to level it out. Oh, okay. This is what I said in the car. <laughs> Sorry. 
uh, women are in fact inheriting the earth. We're taking over the world. Yes. And so we are going to have to evolve to be able to become asexual and reproduce on our own where we don't need yeah. men. You're, you, you're going to why the last man it. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to evolve to be asexual so that we don't need men to reproduce. We're going to evolve. To what about Roddy, R- Rowdy, Roddy Piper though? He's already dead, isn't he? Oh yeah. He yeah he's it. dead, but he's, he's still going to frog town. <laughs> yep. It, now let me, let me, let me, counter what you said okay let's see if if uh what is his name please don't Captain, hit my arm i'm sorry okay walker thank texas you. ranger what walker texas name? ranger what's his name chuck norris chuck norris if chuck norris dies How does the then chuck chuck he's buried then the sheer amount of testosterone inside of chuck norris might level everything out um Possibly. okay now let me counter what you said turtles are not going to like become extinct and die out. I didn't say that. Um, well, well, turtles will continue to be born, both male and female. And let me tell you why. I Let me quote the words of one of America's greatest prophets, St. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. Nature finds a way. Life, uh, 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 stammer, finds a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Think about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh There's man, I'm wearing a shirt. That. It's better if I don't have a shirt. It's better if I'm just kind of laying. Just yeah, uh, you are like in that this. position. Yeah, I'm in that position. Yeah, I got on. the leg up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited about the next Jurassic World movie because oh, it, because Jurassic World. Two seems to be following in the footsteps of the Jurassic Park series in the sense that just like Jurassic Park, Jurassic World was a great movie. And from the looks of it, all of the other sequels will suck. Ah. Because from what I can see from the previews right now, Jurassic World 2 is going to be just as great as Jurassic Park 2. <laughs> Hooray! Remember that one? It was all Jeff Goldblum. I, I don't think I've ever seen Jurassic Park 2. Oh yeah, I saw part 2 and I saw part 3. It's weird because it's like no one wanted to come back except for Jeff Goldblum. So it was the all Jeff Goldblum movie and it was really weird. <laughs> so anyway, I'm feeling a lot better. Thank Good. you, Bunny. Oh, no now problem. we're at the end of the podcast and now looking back at this episode. I got to say, this was a powerful episode. This was a strong episode. I wrote what I thought to be a very funny monologue about the death of actress Natalie Wood. Yes. Which I thought was funny, despite the despite the, the subject of the monologue. I thought it was very good. Yes. The idea of Robert Rag- Wagner and Pringles just really made me crack up. <laughs> Pre-firing, it made me crack up. And now, looking back at this podcast, I gotta say, I think this was a pretty good episode. I think this was a damn good episode. Good. I concur. So, until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve. And for Maxwell, and Bella, and Eleanor, and Natasha... We're not wrapping up for the last time. Okay. And everybody else, Maxwell, honey, at the end of the first segment, went on this bizarre ad lib story about a demon flying saucer that landed in China to destroy all the China people. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. 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 A, A demon. UFO landed in China to destroy all the China people because that was the best way to destroy Oklahoma. <laughs> that makes no sense. He went into yeah. crazy details. Yes, he did. About it. The the demons in the demon flying saucer were all parents from Oklahoma that had kids. 
Yeah, it, it, it's amazing. Anyway, it's amazing. Yeah, it's my favorite. Anyway, one. yeah. Anyway, from all of us here at the Glindo family, I just want to say thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting. And we will see you next week, you thanks. godless heathens. Bella, stop stealing my Hershey's kisses. Stay safe, Put them back. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> you messed me up. Uh, um, I'll, I'll give you the intro again. I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, thanks. you godless heathens. And you douche waffles and poopy tits. <laughs> I, sto- I, 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 I repurposed my end catchphrase from Stephen Colbert. Yeah. It was like the Oscars. I think it was the Oscars, maybe the the Grammys or the Golden Globes, but it was some award ceremony and Jon Stewart and Stephen Colbert were uh, presenting an award. It, it, it was the Oscars. And Jon Stewart came up first and said to the audience, to everyone watching at home, to the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, to the uh, to everyone out there, I say good evening. And then Stephen Colbert, who was still doing his Stephen Colbert character, said Good evening, you godless sodomites. <laughs> and everyone just freaked out. So that's <laughs> it. so I'm repurposing an old Stephen Colbert every at the end of every podcast. We will see you next week, you godless heathens. Yes. Do 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 do